Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to SPX. I'm here with Natalie Norris. Thank you so much for taking your time. Uh, as you guys know, I've been at SPX this weekend, just doing the rounds, uh, saying hello to a few people, but also conducting a few interviews, and I really wanted to take the chance to, to talk to you. Um, you are a cartoonist, uh, a visiting teacher at the moment at Center for the Cartoon Studies, and then also the writer of Dear Mini. Yeah. And you're also listed as a comics librarian. So, uh, I guess for context, can you summarize what that is in the scope of larger comics, but then also specifically to what you do? Yeah, so I, um, I'm not actually faculty at the Center for Cartoon Studies, but I've done um, classes and I did a summer workshop. And then I work at the library there, so that's what I mean by comics librarian, where the collection is 90% comics. and. Um, yeah, so I, I got to do some buying for the library at the show here, which was fun. So is that more so like a curation of what gets put at the within the library itself? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And um, like we were chatting before, we, we had Tilly on the show, who is an alum, you know, you're, you're a friend of. Yeah. And uh, we also got into some aspects of you know, teaching and talking comics. And... Uh, one of the things that we get from our listeners a lot of the time is, you know, beyond the how do I break in, once, once these individuals are kind of established or have a Kickstarter, I think one of the things that they start to learn is, you know, narrative structure and things like that. Is there a central lesson that you try to get across to students or a central lesson that you try to get across to new creators as they break into the industry, like a thing that they, you think they should hone in on? Yeah, I think... It's funny because there's not necessarily one thing for each person, but I think the challenge is always figuring out how you can hone in on the best version of your storytelling. So whatever that may be. And I think there's ways you can start that are more traditional, like scripting, thumbnails, pencils going that way. But I think that for a lot of memoir stories, you have to figure out a way that is more tailored to um, an approach that's going to work for you. And so I always um, encourage people to sort of play around with it and don't necessarily look for the answers from other creators, but just see what like comes up naturally. And if, like for me, I didn't work in chronological order when I made the story, so that was like really huge. And I think that there's a lot of different tricks that if you just sort of are able to like hone or like go inside and figure out what, what makes the most sense for you. One of the things you noted in the back matter of Dear Mini is you know, you're a notorious note taker, you, you kind of catalog your life, but that you didn't necessarily reflect back on those, those works or those pieces, I guess. Uh, you kind of just like found the story itself. Is that typically how you might work in that case? Like, do you, do you kind of just start a story and it, uh, as it unfolds, you kind of find the voice? Yeah, definitely. Because I think like, there's a totally different voice to a diary that you're keeping, you know, in the moment as a teenager. Um, and those are the things that I was very meticulous about recording. And I wanted the memoir to come at it from a different perspective. I didn't want it to just be um, a comics version of the diaries. Like, I wanted it to be its own thing. And I think that in doing so, I was able to even, like, access memories from a different way. And I think it's just, like it brings a new sort of maybe depth to the story that if you just take the diaries, there's no hindsight. Yeah, it's just like in that moment, right? right. You can't reflect on it, I guess. Yeah. And uh, so specifically, we're talking about Dear Mini. Uh, it's a, a your debut graphic novel, and it's a, a memoir um, covering your uh, experiences in Europe and specifically sexual trauma within there. Right. And uh, it's structured as a letter which very different from the diary that you had initially, I guess, ideated on. Yeah. Is there a reason you took that direction, like a letter versus maybe structuring it in, in, a, in a different way but from a, like a point of view perspective? Yeah, so I guess another thing that um, I would, sort of going back to like advice for students or whatnot, it's, it's about figuring out a framing device for your story because memoir obviously like, it could be the whole story of your life, but that's not a very compelling narrative. And I think that also would be really overwhelming. So the letter allowed me to have like a container where I could always come back to what would be relevant to many. And if it's not relevant, like there's 
parts that happen, you know, in America or with American friends that I really had to pare those sections down because they just weren't relevant to many and therefore the story at hand. So I think that can be really helpful um, having a framing device like that. Did you actually end up sending a letter to many? Yeah, so the second book um, deals more with our falling out of touch and then coming back into contact. So we've we've sent a lot of actual letters back and forth, but this story, um, this letter I did send to her. And so, yeah, like she's read it and, and been sort of, um, not so much a part of, of creating it, but definitely um, her experience, I feel like, has, will now probably inform how I approach the second book. Sure, like, like, not necessarily the reaction, but I guess, the vehicle of the letter to her as, I guess it's like a narrative tool. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when you, when you did end up publishing the book, uh, what was sort of the reception from friends, family? Because I imagine, you know, you had mentioned in the, in the book, this wasn't necessarily something you shared with people. So was there, uh, what was that reaction once people kind of came across this? Yeah, so I mean, it, it just came out officially in, July. Yeah, so I feel like things are still trickling in, hearing from different people who knew me back then. Um, in general, it's definitely been a positive experience, and I think naively, I sort of assume that people who don't already read comics wouldn't read it. Okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, you know, they're serious adults who don't read comics, and, and um, that is not true. Turns out if you make a memoir, people who know you even tangentially will be curious enough <laughs> to want to read it. That yeah, and, and I think, um, but in general, I think it's been like a really positive thing um, to know that I could put that story out there and, you know, the world didn't end, which of course is how it feels when you're, you're younger and you're holding these secrets. Did it did it feel like that up until the book was like published? Um, yeah, and even within like the first month or so, like of putting it out there, there's this definitely um, sort of like nervousness of the anticipation, you know, of how people will react. And I know like for certain, especially family members, like it's been really difficult. So it's not that it hasn't been intense or, um, hasn't brought up like difficult emotions but so far no one's like disowned me <laughs> so that's why I'm like okay it's a win <laughs> to continue a process like, yeah. yeah okay yeah. and um turning I guess back to like the actual structure of the book um I love the the usage of the motif of it continuing to be a letter out right so you don't necessarily use panels a lot of the time and I was curious about that decision yeah so I I think I just like the freeformness of it. Um, when I was drafting, I would just like take a piece of paper straight to ink. Sometimes I would draw images first and then put text around it. Other times I would put down some text and put images. So not having to structure, like decide ahead of time how to structure a page allowed me to just, I think, get more into the memories. And that was really helpful. And then I think just aesthetically, I think it's fun that comics, you know, they're normally pretty rigid and like on a grid. And so it was fun for me to have it be much more fluid. And I think that comes off as a, it's a reflection, it's a memory, right? Like I'm, I'm thinking back on this thing and sometimes they can be, thoughts can be jumbled, right? Yeah, yeah. so I, I think that comes across pretty well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, it also makes the book feel like there's a lot of just single page usage. Is that a, a tool you use frequently? Or do you feel like um, there's maybe, I think, only one, maybe two full page spreads uh, or two yeah. page spreads in it? I think there's just one. Um, so I definitely use that like for emphasis. And then with the single page spreads, um, those also I think are, are for emphasis. Like it maybe slows down the reading because when you're reading little panels, on a page, like you kind of go da 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 da, but then if you get like one big image, like it forces the reader to pause. And like take it in, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then 
one last question. Um, as you as you might, uh, let's say, advise somebody who wants to build a memoir, you spoke to it earlier, you know, it's, it's up to them to ultimately decide, but do you consider the construction of a memoir as compared to another story to be different? Do you find them to be the same? I think there's similarities. Um, I think sometimes people assume that memoir is maybe easier because you already know the plot points, you're not having to come up with that the way you do in fiction, but I think you're still dealing with the same um, issues in terms of like how you structure it. So, and then because the plot points are set, it kind of creates its own tension and how do you take something that's real and make it into a narrative without altering like the truth of it. Okay. Okay, for sure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Sure. Um, is there anything currently that you're reading, uh, anything that you're on the lookout for? Uh, I, I mean, I just love graphic memoirs, so I feel like if any of those come across my way, I know there's one coming out with um, Street Noise Press called Silence Full Stop, and that's also about adolescent sexual assault, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, MS Harkness has a new book out that I'm excited to read. Uh, yeah, so mostly I just read memoirs. <laughs> is that, uh, like, a, is there a specific reason that that kind of pulls you? I mean, I think it just speaks to me because that's where my head's at, you know? It's like when you're dedicating yourself to something, and memoir also, like, it's a really intense thing to take on. So there's a sense of, like, solidarity, especially other, like, women who are doing books about trauma. Like, I'm always drawn that to that to see like okay how do they depict this how do they deal with it and then what's so great about comics is that you can often actually get to know those creators and then you can talk about it um kayla e who has a book coming out with fan graphics um she's become a friend and so it's like great to talk to yeah different people who are committed to the same sort of crazy uh pursuit is there a difficulty in like sitting down and kind of uh, I guess drawing it out, like, like. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's hard to convey that, especially in interviews, because I'm at the point of the process where I finished the book, and now it's like you're going forward and um, trying to like put that into the world. So you have to put your like publicity base on. But the reality is that like when you are at your desk, it is so like emotionally taxing, and that can be physically taxing, and also isolating. So I think that's why, for me, reading other memoirs can feel like a way to connect to people, um, even if you're not able to directly connect with them right then. A sense of solidarity yeah, to some solidarity. degree. Okay, for sure. Well, Natalie, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time. Uh, is there anything you want to plug beforehand after? Um, let's see, I'm on Instagram. Uh, and then I also have a Patreon where I'll be serializing the second volume of the oh. book. Yeah. So that'll be coming up soon. Well, in addition to your Patreon, uh, our Patreon is also available. Oh, so excellent. yeah, uh, if you ha want to support either one of us, uh, please do. The links are going to be included along with your socials and all that. So for anybody interested, uh, please do click through, give it a read. Well worth it, well worth the time. And for anybody who took a listen to our Tilly Walden interview, I think there's parallels in the way that you can depict a story and depict uh, real life a lot of the time. Um, so thank you again at the Comics Pals all over the place. Uh, if you're tuned in here on YouTube, keep, uh, keep your eye out. There's going to be a lot more content coming through. Thank you, guys.